As it pertains to active COVID cases and contact tracing, how many exactly, how many offensive players do you plan to be without Saturday following this latest round of testing? Um, to be honest with you, I don't even, I don't know the exact number. Um, I know we've got a number of guys that are, are going to be playing for us, and those are kind of the guys we've been dealing with and worrying about. Um, but I don't think it's going to affect us very much. I think we're really in pretty good shape personnel-wise with the ability to, to go out and play. It, one other question. It seemed like Arkansas State defensive backs uh, were practicing social distancing a little bit against Memphis's wide receivers. How can you guys exploit that Saturday? Well, I, I think uh, just to be quite honest with you, I think that uh, Memphis really came in with uh, you know a high octane offense, an offense that I think for the most part Arkansas State was was uh, gave them probably a little bit more credit than they deserved from a passing game standpoint. Um, and I felt like Memphis did a nice job really trying to exploit the run game. Um, they obviously, uh, when you look at their one tight end, number five, and you look at their one wide receiver, um, number 10, they were both uh, explosive, dynamic guys. And, and I was kind of surprised Arkansas, Arkansas State gave them as much respect as, as they did. Thank you, Courtney. Kels? Hey, Courtney. Um... When you talk about you know your personnel that you'll have and being in good shape, has that improved for you this week from where you were on Monday? Uh, yeah, it's gotten better. I, I feel like the last four or five, six days, as far as everybody uh, uh, that we're, we, we thought was going to be in the game plan, being back, being able to go, um, I, I really feel good about um, the running back position. I feel good about the, the, the receiver spots. Um, the tight ends, uh, obviously, Briley's a guy that's going to be a, a, a great addition for us. Um, but we've got to go out and execute now. And it seems like it's been forever since we've actually had anything that meant anything. And, and you know, the bowl game was a long time ago. So uh, I'm ready to get out there and see what we have. Are there any receivers we haven't been pestering you about that you're expecting big things from on Saturday? You know, like we've talked before, you know, there's five, six, seven guys that I really feel comfortable with that that you never know which game's going to be their game where they get, uh, you know, have a kind of a breakout game. The biggest thing I want is I want consistency out there. I, I, I want to see if it's Malik or or whoever it is. I want to see them every week be a guy that somebody should be nervous about or worried about them just going off on them, you know. And um, I, I felt like last year, our, our return game, using that as an example, it didn't matter if it was a punt return, a kickoff return, whichever guy was back there did a great job of making big plays. And, and that's what we got to do from the receiver position each week. One more for you. Uh, Memphis had quite a bit of success throwing to their tight end against Arkansas State. As a coordinator, when you see something like that, are you tempted to emulate it the next week? Or do you figure that they'll well, double down in that area. Well, a, a, a little bit we, we we see that, but you know, their their number five, the the tight end for Memphis. You know, I don't know what his true size was, but what he had uh, he had the ability to stretch the field a little bit. He ran some really nice corner routes and did some nice things, um, and we can do that as well. But but we don't have quite the same athlete as far as. Uh, even though he did play with his hand in the ground as a true tight end, um, I bet you, and I'm guessing because I never really looked at it, I bet you he's only a 6'2", 225 type of guy. And I feel like our guys are more 6'4", 6'5", 250 and, and still can do some of those things, just maybe not quite to the receiver aspect that that guy did. John Kurtz. Yeah, Courtney, what kind of a weapon is Deuce Vaughn and, and what has he done to earn his way on the depth chart early in his career? Well, you know, he's obviously not very big, but but he's the type of guy that we feel like can get lost in behind our low linemen. You know, we, we've got a big offensive line. Um, we feel like that when you do hand it to him, he can get in behind people and then all of a sudden squirt out and, and go make a big play. Um, the other thing that he does is he's got great ball skills, um, really has a, a, the ability to catch the football and is a natural, natural receiver, even though he's definitely a tailback. And you know, right now, I know they were listed uh, together on the depth chart, but if, if Skyler were to go down in a game, who the backup quarterback would be, who you would go to you next? Know, I, I think the biggest thing there would be when would it happen and, and w what type of an injury is it? Um, I, I think that, um, you, know, you know, if it was at the end of a game or if it was even early in the game, then I think it would be a little bit of quarterback by, uh, well, if it's at the end of the game, I think it'll be Nick Oss for sure. If it, if it was at the earlier in the game, it, it'll be a little bit quarterback by committee because I feel really good with both, uh, both those guys. 
Thanks, Courtney. Derek. Yeah, coach, is there, I guess, an added uh, value to some of your offensive linemen that can maybe play on the inside and the outside? Oh, 100%. Uh, we need to be, and I think we will be, uh, multiple in our ability to play a tackle at guard and even possibly even a guard out at tackle. Um, the center position, you, you, you kind of, generally speaking, you, you feel like it's generally an inside guy, either a guard or center, playing the guard or center position. But, you know, uh, our tackles, we really need them to be able to be play wherever we need them because we're, we're not yet to a position where we feel like we got nine guys. We're, excuse me, we're more sitting there at the seven guys and, and how do we make them work? And in terms of Will Howard kind of being in the discussion for the backup job, is that kind of out of necessity in what this year has kind of been? Or has he done enough to where he would be in that discussion regardless of the circumstances? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think he'd be in that discussion regardless of the circumstances. I think, honestly, if we'd have had a true spring ball, um, he, he could have even continued to show more because he's done a phenomenal job in the short amount of time that he's been here. Thank you. Back to Kels. Y'all listed three names at running back on the depth chart, but last year you dipped quite a bit beyond just three. Who are some other guys at that position that uh, you're yeah, high you, on? Even you know, I think I think all you know. You know, we talked about six or seven the, a, a week and a half ago or so, and we feel good still about all of them. The running back position right now. You know, unfortunately, there's not enough footballs to go around. It's kind of like a basketball team out there where you got a bunch of guys that can score. Uh, we do feel good about that position. And, and now it's when you do get opportunity, you need to take full advantage of it. Um, so we're going to try to get people on the field and, and see what they can do.